In this video, we're going to look at an interesting definition for the so-called natural logarithm. And then we're going to show that this definition creates the same object that the standard definition creates. So let's look at what we've got. We want to define for all positive numbers x, so positive real numbers, the ln of x is the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. So I'm saying ln instead of natural log because for the time being, we're going to forget that this is the natural logarithm. In other words, we're going to forget the defining idea of the natural logarithm, which is that it's the inverse of the natural exponential function. In other words, the natural log of e to the x is equal to x. We'll actually finish this video off by showing this purple box equation holds, just defining our ln to be this guy up here. Okay, so let's maybe get to it. So the first thing that we're going to do is prove the following theorem which will say that this ln of x satisfies kind of all the things that we would like it to satisfy. So first off is that it will satisfy the ln of x times y is the same thing as the ln of x plus the ln of y. So in other words, this function satisfies the standard product to some rule that a logarithm should satisfy. Okay, the next thing, which will follow pretty quickly from this one, is the natural log of, or the ln, I should say, of x to the n is equal to n times ln of x. This is going to be true for all integers n. And then finally, will show that this satisfies also a quotient rule. So the ln of x over y is equal to the ln of x minus the ln of y. Although, to be honest, most of these come fairly quickly after we prove this first one. Okay, so that being said, let's move into the proof of this first equation. Okay, so let's maybe set f of x equal to the ln of xy and then form a differential equation for f of x. So notice that this thing is going to be equal to the integral from 1 to xy of 1 over t dt. So now taking the derivative, so f prime of x will be equal to the derivative with respect to x of this thing right here. So the integral from 1 to xy of 1 over t dt. But now we can apply the second fundamental theorem of calculus along with the chain rule to get the following result. This will be 1 over xy times the derivative with respect to x of xy. So again, we're composing xy into this integral function by the fundamental theorem of calculus. We know the derivative of an integral function is exactly this guy right here, but then the chain rule requires us to multiply by this next term. Okay, so this is looking good. Now we can see the derivative with respect to x of xy is just y. That gives us y over xy, which is just one over x. But notice that one over x is also the derivative with respect to x of ln of x, sort of by our construction, as well as the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's see. That means the derivative of f is the same thing as the derivative of this ln of x, but that means that f equals this ln of x plus a constant. In other words, they differ by a constant. So this is a standard rule that if two functions have the same derivative, they must differ by at most a constant. Okay, so that means we know f of x, which is ln of xy from our definition, is equal to ln of x plus a constant, like I said. Now we can figure out what that constant is just by setting x equal to 1. So if we set x equal to 1, we'll see that the ln of y is equal to the ln of 1, which is very, very clearly equal to 0 because we have an integral from 1 to 1, um, plus c. So that means the ln of y is equal to c, or c is equal to the ln of y. But then, rewriting our equation with that, we see that we get exactly number 1, which is where we wanted to end. 
Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and we'll prove number two using induction. So we just got done proving this first equation was true. Now we're gonna move on to the second equation which we will prove using induction. So let's maybe first note that the n equals zero and the n equal one case are both okay. So that's pretty clear. Ln of x to the zero is the same thing as ln of one, which we argued to be equal to zero because it turns into an integral from one to one, but that's what we should get over here. Furthermore, ln of x to the one is one times ln of x, so that's good to go as well. So we can think about these as our base cases. So now let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to one, so this is like our induction step for the positive integers, we have the natural log of x to the k is equal to k times the natural log of x. And now this is, like I alluded to before, going to go pretty quickly. So let's note now that the natural log of x to the k plus 1 is equal to the natural log of x times x to the k. But now we can apply this rule up here. That gives us the natural log of x plus the natural log of x to the k. Now we can apply our induction hypothesis. That gives me the natural log of x plus the natural log of x times k. But that's exactly going to be k plus 1 times the natural log of x, which is exactly what we need. So that takes care of the case when n is a non-negative integer. And the case when n is a negative integer is maybe best saved as a quick application of number three. And we'll leave that quick application of a homework problem, which means now we'll just move on to prove number three. Now we're gonna look at this third equation. And we'll do that by first deriving a simpler version of it and then applying that simpler version to what we've got. So I'm gonna take the function g of x equal to the integral from one to one over x of one over t dt. Notice that's exactly equal to the ln of one over x. So of course, since we probably know something about logarithm rules, we know that should be equal to minus natural log of x, but we need to get there. Okay, so let's take the derivative of both sides. So here we've got g prime of x will be equal to, let's see, that's gonna be one over one over x times the derivative of one over x. But the derivative of one over x is minus one over x squared. So again, what we did there is use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two along with the chain rule. So in the end, we see that we get minus one over x. Okay, but now let's notice that minus one over x is equal to minus the derivative with respect to x of ln x. So that tells me that g differs by the negative natural log by a constant. So in other words, g of x equals some constant minus the natural log of x. Then how do we figure out what that constant is? Well, maybe we'll evaluate this at x equals one, and we'll see on the one hand, we should get zero by the definition of g of x, but on the other hand, we'll get c by this equation that we got down here, given the natural log of one is zero. So that means we have c is equal to zero, which means g of x equals minus natural log of x. But now putting this all together, we see that the natural log of one over x is the same thing as minus natural log of x. Okay, so now we're armed with enough to prove number three quite easily. Now we're ready to finish the proof of the third part of this theorem really quickly before moving on to proving that this ln of x is actually the natural logarithm. Okay, so this is going to go quite quickly. Notice this is ln of x over y is the same thing as ln of x times 1 over y, which is the same thing as ln of x plus ln of 1 over y by part number one, but that's the same thing as ln of x minus ln of y by what we just proved. Okay, so that means we've proved part three, and now we're ready to finish everything off. So now we're gonna prove kind of the main result, which is this ln of x function that we've ta been talking about satisfies the same rule as the natural logarithm. That is the ln of e to the x equals x. So let's see maybe how we can do that. Like I said, our goal is to prove this. So we need to take 
the following definition for e to the x. So there's a bunch of definitions we could take, but let's just take the power sum definition. So e to the x is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So notice that means that the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is also equal to itself. And this is actually going to be really important that we've seen that e to the x satisfies this differential equation because what we'll do is take like the inverse function of this ln function and show it also satisfies this differential equation. And thus, along with some other things, it must coincide with the e to the x function. Okay, so let's do that. So let's take, I'll call it x x to be equal to the inverse of this natural log function. So in other words, it's ln inverse x. So what that means is that ln evaluated at x of x is equal to x. So that's just the function inverse function relationship. So now we can take the derivative of this equation to get a differential equation for this exp x function. So taking the derivative, we'll have 1 over exp x times exp x prime equals 1. Okay, but that means that we have exp x prime equals itself, so exp x. But then, like I said, the definition that we're taking for e to the x is the special function that satisfies the differential equation, the derivative with respect to x of e to the x equals e to the x. I guess I should say also with the initial condition, e evaluated at zero equals one. So what we've just done is showed that this exp x satisfies the same differential equation. So maybe it's a bit more clear if we write it like this, the derivative with respect to x of exp x equals exp x. So like I said, it's satisfying the same differential equation. Now we wanna show that it also satisfies the same initial condition. So let's see if we can do that. So also, we see exp evaluated at zero is the inverse of the natural log function evaluated at zero. But then it's easy to see that the inverse of the natural log function evaluated at zero is one, because one is the only thing that we can plug into this to achieve zero. How do we know it's the only thing? Because this function is an increasing function and thus it is one to one. So this is equal to one and just let's point that out. That's because the natural log of one is zero. Again, the natural log of one is this integral from one to one of one over t dt. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So we have e to the x satisfies those two equations. We're taking it to be defined in terms of those two equations. I guess we're using something about the uniqueness of the solution to a differential equation right here, but I think that's okay. And then we have this exp function, which is the inverse of our ln, also satisfies the same initial condition, but that means they must be the same function. So in other words, we have exp of x is in fact equal to e to the x. But that's exactly what we wanted to show, and that's a good place to stop.